The purpose of this video is to learn the rules for commas and where commas should go. A quick tip about commas is that commas are used so that you know the flow of a sentence or how it should be read. So if you listen for the natural pause in the sentence, you'll usually find where a comma should go. Let's go ahead and look at the rules for commas. The first rule is introductory transitions or phrases. Go ahead and write the word transitions in the blank in your notes. Here are some example sentences that use transitions. Look at the first sentence. First, we must clean our rooms. Now if you listen in the sentence, you can hear that pause coming after first. So we need a comma after first. Let's go ahead and put that there. First, comma, we must clean our rooms. Look at the second sentence. In addition, I think that winter is the best season. Again, you hear the pause right after in addition. Make sure in your notes that you put these commas in the sentences. Let's look at the next rule. The next rule is for subordinate clauses. And subordinate clauses have words like after, when, since, other ones are before, if, these words, if you listen in the sentence, will create a natural pause in the middle of the sentence. And it's not complete unless you put a comma in there. Look at the first sentence. After the dance, we will go get some food. See how there's a natural pause after the word dance? A comma goes there. This is an example of a subordinate clause because it has this word after in the beginning that makes this pause. Look at the next one. When I go to the store, I will pick up some milk. Again, you hear a pause right here, and a comma needs to go here because this isn't a complete sentence without this comma. Look at the next one. Since she smiled at me, I think she may like me. Put a comma right here. So again, if you see any words like these at the beginning of a sentence, just know that you're going to have a comma in the middle. The third rule is we need commas to separate a series of words or phrases. The rule of thumb is that if you have three or more in a series, you need to have a comma. If it's just two, you don't need a comma. Let's look at the first sentence. The flag is red, white, and blue. We have three things here. So we need a comma after the first one. We need a comma after the second one, and that's it. Let's say this sentence was, the flag is red and blue. Let's say there was no white. I would not need this comma here anymore because it would just be red and blue. So again, if you have two things, you don't need a comma. If you have three or more, you do need to have commas. Let's look at the next sentence. Dolphins are good at flipping in the air, jumping through hoops, and catching fish. Remember, you want to look for the pauses. Dolphins are good at flipping in the air. That's the first thing. Jumping through hoops. That's the second thing. And catching fish. That's the third thing. So I have my two commas. The third rule is when you have additional information in a sentence. We get to go to London which is my favorite city to visit. You'll notice that there's a pause right here, so we need a comma. This part right here is what we call extra additional information. We already talked about London. Now I'm telling you it's my favorite city to visit. So that's additional added to the complete sentence. So we put a comma. See if you can find where the next comma goes. She is good at many sports, such as soccer and volleyball. You should have put the comma right here, and this is our additional information here, such as soccer and volleyball. The next rule is for a positives. A positives come in the middle of a sentence, or sometimes it can come in the beginning or at the end, like a transition. The capital of North Carolina, Raleigh, is where the hurricanes play. A positives usually repeat the same information you've already had. We already know the capital of North Carolina is our subject. Then we say Raleigh. This is our extra information. This is the a positive. 
See if you can figure out where the commas go. The capital of North Carolina, Raleigh, is where the hurricanes play. See how we have a pause between this? It kind of stops in the middle of the sentence. Let's look at the next one. Larry, my friend from school, is coming over tonight. Larry and my friend from school are the same thing. So we have this information in the middle of the sentence that we break off with commas. The next rule is for dialogue. Dialogue can be used in several different ways. Excuse me, said the man, but I believed you dropped your wallet. The part that we have in quotes, that's the part that's actually said. And we want to break that apart from what isn't said. We didn't say, said the man. So we need to break it off with commas. Excuse me, comma, said the man, comma, but I believe you dropped your wallet. See how we separated this information from what was actually said? Let's look at the next one. Mary asked, can I go to the mall? Again, this is the part that was said, so we want to put a comma in between the part that wasn't said. I am tired, the boy said. Again, we put a comma right here, because this is the part that was said, and this is the part that wasn't said. Here's the last rule. A compound sentence is when you have two sentences that you put together. Let's look at this first one. I heard Taylor Swift's new song on the radio, and I really like it. I heard Taylor Swift's new song on the radio is a complete sentence. It could be by itself. So could, I really like it. Those are two complete sentences, and we combined it with the word and. This is called a conjunction. So when you have two sentences, you have to separate them. So we put a comma right here. See if you can figure out where the next one goes. She is a talented singer and a great performer. Now wait a minute. Before you put the comma, ask yourself, are these two complete sentences? She is a talented singer is a complete sentence. She is our subject. Is is our predicate. You have to have both in order for it to be a complete sentence. What about this part? A great performer. Is that a complete sentence? No, it doesn't have a predicate. Performer is our subject, but what's the performer doing? So if we don't have two complete sentences, we don't need a comma. So don't put a comma right here. It's not two complete sentences. Let's see if the next one is two complete sentences. She is a talented singer, and I think she is a great performer. Could she is a talented singer be by itself? Yeah, we have subject, predicate. I think she is a great performer. Is that a complete sentence? Yes. I is our subject, think is our predicate. So we need a comma, and where do we put the comma? Right before the conjunction. So again, you only need commas when you have two complete sentences. You have to have a subject and a predicate for it to be a complete sentence. So that's the end of our comma notes. Make sure that you've made all your notes and put all the commas where they need to be. When you're writing, remember these comma rules and remember the quick tip about looking for pauses in the sentence and where it naturally would pause. It probably is going to need a comma there.